Welcome to lecture 19, conditional and not operators. So out of these two operators, we've already seen the not operator used a couple times. Um, we saw the not with the not equals, the exclamation equal sign, and that can check for if something is not equal to something else. Basically, I just wanted to show you the not operator used with if statements and how it works with that. But before that, I want to go look at the conditional operator, which is basically a shorthand for an if statement. It's basically an if statement on the fly, you can think of it as. So basically, the syntax of the conditional operator is simply, or I mean the operator itself is actually just a question mark and a colon. Now, how you use these can actually create a simple if statement. Basically how it works is, the, you put a condition here before the, the question mark. That's your condition. If that is true, it does whatever follows the question mark. And if it is false, it does whatever is after the colon. So this, this is basically how it works. The condition, if it's true, after the question mark. If it's false, after the colon. So this is basically, like I said, used on the fly. It's an if statement on the fly. And it can be pretty useful. For example, let's say I have two ints. Int x equals 5, int y equals 6. And I want to say, and let's say these ints could be numbers that are read in from the console. Like we may not even know that it's 5 and 6 right now. Maybe they're read in from a console, maybe a database. We don't know. Um, but now let's say we had a, a, another integer saying uh, int biggest number. And I want this equal to whatever number is bigger, if it's x or y. So I know it's y, but I can't just say y. I need to be able to determine which one is actually bigger. So I could do an, a full-blown if statement. I could say if x is greater than y, then biggest number equals x, else biggest number equals y. Basically, I can do that with a normal if statement. But with if statements on the fly, or basically conditional operators, we could do this right in the actual assignment itself. So instead of doing an if statement, I can put it directly after the equal sign. I can do an if statement. So I can say x greater than y. So that's my condition, right? Remember, the first thing is the condition. So x greater than y, question mark. I'm asking a question. Is x greater than y? If it is, then the biggest number is x. Else, or the colon, the biggest number is y. So basically, because it's an assignment, it's basically going to take x and dump it into biggest number, or it's going to take y. So it's either going to do x, it's, I mean, it, it's first going to do this check. Is x greater than y? If x is greater than y, by just putting this x here, that's saying biggest number equals x. If that if this is false, then it will do biggest number equals y. So this will basically take whatever the biggest number is. This is basically, like I said, an if statement on the fly. So if I print console.write line biggest number to the console, we'll see that it prints out the six. If I change these numbers up to, I don't know, 50 and, and six, 16, you can see, oh no, 50 is the biggest number. So automatically on the fly, my integer variable now holds the biggest number. So just remember the syntax. Condition. If that's true, take that. If it's false, take that. This can be used anywhere, basically. Anywhere that you can put a value, you can put this, because essentially this only returns a value. So if, let's say I wanted to write into the console. I can say console.write line. Actually, let's say we had a, a variable called test score. Um, we'll say double test score equals, and we'll give it a value. Let's say he got a 95 on his test. I can say console. Let's say I just want to do a console.write line statement saying if he passed or failed. I can simply do this. I can say um, test score greater than or equal to 60, question mark. If it is, I want to write pass. If it's not, I want to write fail. So basically, it's going to say console.write line. This is the check. If it's true, it goes console.write line pass. If it's false, console.write line fail. Basically, this whole operator just returns either one of these. So think of it this way. 
I can always write console.writeLine pass as a string. So think this code is not really here. It's not writing console.writeLine test score greater than equal to 60. That's what normally confuses people. That's just part of the if statement. It's only going to write pass or fail because this can, this whole operator, which is this whole thing, returns a string essentially in this case. So it's only going to return either pass or fail as a string, and that's what gets printed to the console. So if I run that, you can see. It says pass. Now with the not operator, I just simply wanted to just show you it being used with if statement so that if you ever see it in code, um, you're not confused about it. Um, if you remember before I was talking about when you have a bool, let's say bool my bool equals true. You can say if my bool. And that saying if my bool basically is true. If you don't put an equal sign or anything like that, it's saying if my bool equals true. So if I wanted to say, well, what happens if my bool is false? Yes, I could say equals false, or I can just negate it. I could put an exclamation point basically right in front of it, and that is the negation operator. It basically does the opposite. So it's saying if not my bool. So if, if it's saying if my bool is false, basically. You can also do things like if you have an integer, int my int equals 5. I can say if something is like being checked, I, like for example, um, my int is greater than or equal to 6. I'm doing a check if my int is greater than or equal to 6. I can go, oh wait, I just want to negate that really quick. Put a not there. Now we'll do the opposite. So anywhere you stick an exclamation point like that, it's going to do the opposite. Basically, it's going to get whatever's returned here. And then it's going to negate it. So if this is true, it's going to switch it to false. If it's false, it will switch it to true. It just does the opposite. And I just wanted you to see how it looks inside of an if statement. So if you read this, you weren't like, wait, what the heck is going on? It's just negating whatever is returned from that. So that's it for this lecture. Next thing is the quiz for this whole section, followed by the three exercises that if you want to do. They come with the solutions like in all my sections.